up everyone and welcome to another video. Before we get to the computer and start coding, hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like if you enjoy the content, and drop a comment let me know what you want to see coded up next. Now we're on episode 18 of our Hello World series. We're going to be coding up the front end validation for our login form. Back in episode 12, we coded up our front end validation for our sign up form. We can reuse that form validation helper object that we created. We're going to validate the user's email address and the user's password when they click our login button. Links will be in the description below to things like the GitHub repository, the live site where you can see this code working, and I will see you on the computer. Welcome to Hello World episode 18 login form front end validation. Now before we get to the code, we need to make sure that we have the code checked out and set up running locally. So if you head over to github.com slash jstolpe slash hello world, this is our repository. I have this repository checked out over in my WAMP WW folder, and here's the code in the repository. So then over on my local box, I can say localhost slash hello world. And here's our hello world website. And we're going to be focusing on our login page, the front end validation. In our last video, we did the UI for this. And so if we click login, nothing happens because we're not validating the inputs yet. In this video, we're going to add JavaScript to handle the login button press and validating these input fields. Also in the readme for the GitHub repository at the bottom here, you can find the whole playlist for this Hello World episode series starting at episode one right here. And also a link to the live site here. And you can see the website here live in action at helloworld.justinstolpe.com. Now before we start coding, we want to make sure we have a branch for our code. If we do a git branch minus a, you'll see here we have listed out branches for the other episodes. So if you want to check out code for those specific episodes, they are in their own branch. Our last one being episode 17, login form UI. And then at the end, we merge the branch back into main and push it to our hello world.justinsolvy.com. So we're going to do a git checkout minus b, and we'll call this episode 18, login form front end validation. And now we have a branch to work out of. Over in our editor, we're going to open up our Hello World app, views, login, HTML body. Here is where our login button is right here. We're going to target this class button dash login. And to do that, we need to create a JavaScript file for our login page. Back to the file explorer, app, assets, JS folder. We're going to copy our sign up folder and we're going to name it login. And this will be our login specific script.js file. And we're going to include that script the same way we did for our signup page, which is in our HTML underscore head.php file. Right now, our login HTML head is empty. But we're going to copy our signup. So we're going to open up the signup HTML head. And we're going to copy our script.js here and our form helper JS because the form helper is what's going to help us validate the login form. We're going to paste those two things right here. And so now we have our page specific JavaScript file, which is in a JS folder slash login controller slash script.js, which we can open up right here. Login script. JS. And we have our form helper, which we created in our sign up video when we set up that front end validation. So let's open up that form helper that's over here in the JS folder form helper script.js. And here's our form helper object. Back in our HTML, we have our button dash login class, and we're going to hop over to our login specific script.js file, and we're going to update this for the login form. The first thing we want to do is create a new form helper object here for our login form login. And our class prefix is login. Here's where we're going to target the button click. So instead of button sign up, we want to target our button login class. And on click, we want to do a server login. And we're going to pass in our login form object to our server login function. And outside of our document.ready function, we are going to create our server login function. And the parameter here is our form helper object login. And we're going to get rid of everything in here because this is the server side validation where we're actually going to send the front end data to the back end, which will be in another video. For now, we're just going to put a comment here and say server side validation. And we're going to call login form dot validate. And we're going to say, hey, login form object, can you validate the front end data for us? And only if it's valid are we going to attempt to do the server side validation. Otherwise, the login form object will take care of putting a red border around the correct input fields when there's an error, or removing it if the input field validation checks out. With our JavaScript setup, we have to add some attributes to our HTML in order for our form helper object to validate the login form. If we open up our sign up HTML body, you'll notice that the inputs here here have a few more data attributes on them. And that's because the form helper requires a few data attributes in order to validate the form. The first data attribute is a column. The data column is going to be a unique name for the column. So every input on the page should have a different column name. Over in our login form, we're going to do the same thing here. Data column equals email. 
basically I'm just naming the columns the same names as they are in the database. That makes it easier on the server side when we're inserting to the database in the next video. And the column for a password is just going to be password. All right, so now the form helper knows that we have a column email and a column password. Now we have to tell the form helper what we want to validate that input against. And so that's where the data check comes in. The data check is basically telling the form helper object, hey, this input needs to be checked for a valid email or needs to be checked for a valid username or checked for a valid name and so on. There's a bunch of different checks over here in our form helper object. We scroll down here. Here's our validate input function and you'll see form element dot check. If it equals email, we're going to call our is valid email function, which is going to do a regex check on the email and return true or false. Then we have our username, name, password, and so on. These all call different functions based on what you specify as the data check. For our email address, just like the sign up form, we're going to do a data check equals email. And then for password, we're going to do data check equals password. And then you'll notice there's a data message here on the sign up form. This gives you the option to specify an error message if you want to display an error message out along with a red highlighted border. But for the login form, I'm going to leave error messages off. All that will happen is that the border will be red on the input field if it does not validate. And now the most important thing, we have to tell the form helper exactly what inputs on the page we want it to validate. So that's where the prefix comes in right here. You'll notice over on our sign up, we have class sign up dash FH, which stands for form helper. Right now, we don't have any dash FH class on here. So our form helper object is literally not going to validate anything because it's going to try to target inputs with a class of login dash FH. So now it will target the email and it will try to validate the email address. And so we're going to put this class onto our password input as well. Now our login form object right here with the class prefix of login will target any input on our login page with a class login dash FH. So let's refresh our page and now let's see if our JavaScript is actually working. When we click this, our button dash login class will be triggered and we will call the validate functions on the email and the password inputs. Right now, they both should highlight red. And they do because our is valid function for email is returning false along with the password from our form helper object. Now, if we create an email address here and we click login, it should go away because the regex is checking for the email structure here with the at symbol and the dot in it and it goes away. So we have a valid email address. Then if I type in a password, it's checking for eight characters long. So if I do only four and click login, we'll still get a red border. If I do eight characters and click login, it goes away. The email has been validated and the password has been validated by our JavaScript on the front end. Now in the next video, we're gonna take this data from this form and we're gonna pass it along to the server side and have the server validate it. It's gonna check to see if the user actually exists in the database and the password is correct. It will return the data to our form helper object on the front end and the form helper will take that server side data and update these inputs accordingly. So if the user doesn't exist on the server side, the front end will highlight these inputs red again. And that is gonna wrap up Hello World episode 18, login form front end validation. We reused our form helper that we created in our sign up form validation video and we validated the email address and the password on the front end. Now all we have to do in the next video is take that data send it to the back end and validate it there and return the results back to the front end. You see how easy it is now that we've created a form helper object to just keep reusing it. Every time we create a new form, we can reuse the form helper to specify the inputs we want to validate for that form and validate them before we send it to the server side. We might have to make a few tweaks, update the form helper here and there, but overall the form helper is making it very easy to validate forms on our website going forward. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later front end validation.